Welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about inflation and real rates of interest. And inflation is known as the decrease in the purchasing power of money or what you are able to buy with your money. And so for example, let's say you had $10 and you wanted to buy bread that costs $5 per loaf, right? With that $10, you could purchase two loaves of bread, right? Each bread is equal to $5 and so five plus five is 10. You can purchase two loaves of bread. But let's say that over time, the price of the bread increases to be $1 greater, and so the price would be $6 per loaf of bread. Well, now that $10 that you have can only buy you one loaf of bread instead of two, right? Because two loaves of bread would now cost $12, not $10. And so the purchasing power of that $10 decreased over time because the price of that bread increased. We used to be able to buy two loaves of bread with that $10, but now we can only buy one, okay? And so the rate at which the price of the bread increased or the rate at which your ability to buy the bread decreased, that is known as inflation. And so because of inflation, the money that we have today might not be worth the same amount in one year or two years or three years in the future and so on. And so then because of that, a particular rate of interest on an account for an investment may not entirely reflect the actual amount of value added to the account, right? So you might have an investment of $100 with a 3% interest rate. And so at the end of one year, you would have an extra $3 in your account. But because of inflation, you might not be able to say that you actually have three more dollars of purchasing power because of inflation, right? That three extra dollars might not be able to buy something one year from now that it could buy today, right? And so we could say that that 3% interest rate isn't entirely accurate in terms of telling you how much more your investment is worth one year from today. And so this is where the idea of real rates of interest come into play. The real rate of interest is an interest rate that is adjusted for inflation. And so it will more accurately reflect the change in purchasing power. All right, and so this is going to be best demonstrated with an example problem. And so let's take a look at that next. Okay, so here's our example problem. Suppose that the forecasted inflation rate for the coming year is an effective annual rate of 15%. What would be the real or inflation adjusted rate of interest for the coming year if one, the effective annual interest rate is 20%, and two, the effective annual interest rate is 10%. Okay, so we have two different parts to this problem. We're gonna be calculating two different real rates of interest, but we're going to do them simultaneously to show you the effects of inflation. And so we'll work on one over here, and we will work on two over here. And so note that for one, the effective annual interest rate is 20%, so we will have that I is equal to 0.2, and then for number two, the effective annual interest rate is 10%, and so we will have that I is equal to 0.1. Okay, and so then in order to understand how we will calculate the real rate of interest or the rate of interest adjusted for inflation, let's consider that for this scenario with these two interest rates and the inflation rate of 15%, that we had an investment today of $100. And then additionally, let's say that in one year, we want to purchase an item that currently costs that same amount of $100, right? So we have $100 today, and there is an item that we wanna buy that currently costs $100, and we wanna see if we can still afford that item one year from today, assuming that we have these interest rates on our investment, and the inflation rate for the coming year is 15%, like our problem tells us. Okay, and so what we're going to do to see if we can purchase this item one year from today is first accumulate the interest on our investment in each case with each interest rate, and then we will look at the new price of this item taking inflation into account, right? So for our interest rate of 0.2, if we were to look at the future value of our investment of $100, we would multiply that by one plus that interest rate of 0.2 to the power of one, and that would accumulate the interest for that investment for one whole year. So we would have $100 times 1.2, and that will be equal to 120. And then for two, where our interest rate is 0.1, we will have that the future value is equal to that $100 investment times one plus 0.1, and that will be to the first power. And so we're multiplying 100 times 1.1, and that will be equal to $110. Okay, so at the end of one year, if we have a 20% interest rate, 
we will have $120. And if we have a 10% interest rate, we will have $110. Okay, and so then at the end of the year, it looks like that we could buy this item with either of these accounts. However, we did not adjust this cost for inflation yet, right? This was the cost of the item we want to buy at the beginning of the year, but after a year has passed, right, at the end of the year, this cost is going to increase due to inflation. And so the end of year cost due to inflation will be that $100, which is the cost of the item, times one plus the inflation rate of 15%, which is 0.15. And so we will be multiplying 100 times 1.15, which will be equal to $115. And so now if we compare that year end cost to our investment in each of these accounts, you can now see that we can afford it with one account, but we cannot afford it with the other account, right? With the account that has 20% interest, we can buy that item with five leftover dollars. But for the account with a 10% interest rate, we are $5 short of purchasing that item, right? We have $110, but we need 115 to purchase that item after a year of inflation. And so you would say that in this scenario where we have a 20% interest rate, that our buying power increased by $5, right? Before our investment was the same as the cost of our item, but now at the end of the year, we have five more dollars than the cost of the item. And so our purchasing power increased by $5. On the other hand, in our second account with a 10% interest rate, our purchasing power decreased by $5 right? We are $5 short of being able to afford that item of $115. And so what we can do to find the real rate of interest is to divide the change in the purchasing power by the year end cost of the item, right? The real rate of interest can be represented by a percentage of the change in the purchasing power divided by the year end cost. And so if we were to calculate that in each of these scenarios, Remember that our purchasing power in this scenario increased by $5, so we will have five divided by that year end cost of 115, so we will have 115, and that will be equal to 0 0.0435, which is equal to 4.35%. This rate right here is the real rate of interest for this account in this scenario. Right, and so what this real rate of interest tells us is that our purchasing power increased by 4.35%, right? Previously, we said it increased by $5, but as a percentage or a real interest rate, it is 4.35%. Okay, but then for our other scenario where we have a 10% interest rate, remember that we said our purchasing power decreased by $5, and so we'll have negative five divided by that year end cost of 115, and that will be equal to negative 0 0.0435 which is equal to negative 4.35%. And so in this case, the real rate of interest is negative 4.35%. And so in this case, our purchasing power decreased by that percentage. Okay, and so compared to a regular rate of interest, which just tells you how much interest will be accumulated in your account, a real rate of interest describes the growth or decay of the purchasing power of an investment in an account. Okay, so they are telling you two different things. But then we actually want to come up with a formula that we can use to calculate a real rate of interest in any scenario. And so what we will do to figure out what that formula will be is analyze this calculation that we did in this problem. And so in order to do that, we only need to look at one of these two scenarios. And so I'll clean up my work here and we can look at this calculation here and come up with a general formula for calculating a real rate of interest. And so in order to do that, we want to ask ourselves, how did we find each of these values in this expression? Well, we found five by subtracting the cost of the item at the end of the year from the amount of our investment at the end of the year. And so we could rewrite that five to be 120 minus 115. And then that will be divided by that 115. And so we'll have 115. But then how do we calculate each of these values? Well, we have our calculation for 120 right here. And so we'll have that this is equal to 100 times one plus the interest rate of 0.2. And then we will subtract the calculation for 115. And we found that value of 115 by multiplying the cost of the item by one plus the inflation rate. And so we'll have 100 times one plus the inflation rate of 0.15. And that will be divided 
by 115, which is still equal to 100 times 1 plus 0.15, and so we will have 100 times 1 plus 0.15, okay? And so then notice that we have a common factor of 100 in both terms in our numerator and in our term in the denominator, and so we can cancel that factor out, and then notice what is left over, right? We have 1 plus 0.2, our interest rate, and then minus 1 plus 0.15, the inflation rate, divided by one plus the inflation rate. And so we can replace those and have a generalized formula that this is equal to one plus I, the interest rate, minus one plus the inflation rate, which I'm going to label with R, and that will be divided by one plus the inflation rate, R, okay? And so if we clean up our work here, we can distribute this negative through this quantity, and we'll have that this is equal to one plus I minus one minus r divided by one plus r, and then notice that this positive one and this negative one will cancel out to just be zero, and so if we cross those out, then we will have that this is equal to i, the interest rate, minus r, the inflation rate, divided by one plus r, the inflation rate. And this right here is the formula for calculating a real rate of interest, and we will label that with I and then a subscript that says real. And so that is the formula that you want to know to calculate a real rate of interest given a particular scenario. Okay, and so with that, that is all I had for this lesson on inflation and real rates of interest. If you wanna see some more example problems where we use this formula, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.